It's the recursive moving average, everybody. And speaking of cursive, I don't know if any of you had to do this. I think age does play a part here, but back in second grade, I actually had to take cursive. It's a, it was a handwriting course as an actual course. And I remember it because it was the only course that back then I got a really bad grade and I got a D. Um, but long term, it was a good thing. It taught me two things. One, school is pretty much useless. And two, as is always the case, because I had really bad handwriting, I was also a genius. My apologies to those of you with good handwriting. You know, I don't make the rules. But welcome, traders, to another installment of the Indicator Profile Series. Now, when I said the name of this indicator, or you read it on the screen, did you think it was a baseline? Because it's not. And not only is it not a baseline, it is very reminiscent of an indicator that you all know and love because I have covered it in full on this channel. And let's jump right into things. But before we do that, if you're new, please enjoy this video. But you may not understand everything we're doing, but that's okay. Go to nonsenseforex.com, read it, watch the video, and get started. Um, understand it's going to be a long process. But if you are not willing to embrace the process and have patience, then you should not be trading. You should honestly be doing something else. So I just saved you loads and loads of time with that one statement. You're welcome. Uh, but for the rest of us, let's go ahead and get into things. Now, the specs on this, uh, the year this was created was 1998, which is within our range. We like anything post-1996. And if you've ever wondered why we say that, it's because spot forex trading, at least online, was first made possible right around 1996 for people with home computers. Uh, it certainly wasn't great. It was pretty crude, but that's at least the, the beginning point of when you were able to do it. So we like to think at least that some, if not the majority of indicators made after 1996, maybe weren't specifically coded for the forex market, but at least we know they probably weren't coded specifically for stocks, which if you've seen the Dirty Dozen video, we do try to avoid. So like always, there are no definitives. We are just playing the odds here. And that's why 1996 is our cutoff point. So this one does fall within it. Now, this is not a baseline. This is a confirmation indicator. It is an indicator that goes over your chart, over the candles, and it looks remarkably similar to the SSL indicator which I did an entire video on. And people to this day still love that indicator. One of the reasons why they like it so much is because you can use it to enter and exit at the same time. And I will say it is very effective on both. And you could do the exact same with this one. Let's look at it. As you can see, looks a lot like the SSL, doesn't it? And I know it's hard to read up here, but we're on the Euro dollar daily chart as we often are. And even though we know that the euro dollar does not trend as well as other pairs do because it's more manipulated, the trends that this indicator is catching are quite good. And a lot of the losses that you're going to find are there, but they could be eliminated by other indicators in your algorithm. Uh, now, just so you know, the biggest mistake I think you can make is to confuse this with a baseline. You don't enter when price crosses and closes over a line. So this pink line right here is the slower of the two, the yellow is the quicker. So the yellow will act as your signal line. And for a long trade, you will wait for the yellow to cross and close above the pink line. And then that is when you will enter. So instead of entering right here for the long, you would enter more up here. Now you might be saying, well, boo hoo, if I did it the old no nonsense Forex way to where I wait for price to cross and close the baseline, then I would have got in sooner. But again, this is the theme for the entire video. You have to trust the process, all right? You guys know how good an indicator like this can be. You just have to let it do what it does. Because then let's take a look at this short over here. So you would wait for the yellow to come cross and close beyond um, the, uh, the pink line on the way down. And that's when you would enter. So instead of entering, I always lose my arrow, you guys know this. <laughs> instead, of, instead of entering right here, you would actually have gotten in more up here instead and had a really nice trend. So if you want to see these a little better, this other picture is in the blog too. You can see where the winners and losers are. Uh, the colors of the letters are just longs and shorts. 
So don't don't let your mind think that red is a loser. That just means it was a winner to the downside. And that's how you would do it. It flies in the face of a couple things we talked about early, early on in the video series to where we don't use moving average crossovers to enter. Here, you actually would use a form of moving average crossover to enter your trade. So again, you have to train your mind to think differently. Don't get cute here. Trust the process. Let it do what it does. And if you want to use it as an exit indicator, you would just wait for the signal to go the other way. But again, don't just rely on that. You know, Test this against the exit indicator you already have. Don't get lazy. So we will now go see how this actually performed. Before we do that, understand that we do our test a certain way. If you don't approve of the way we do it, well then go do it your own way. You know, at the end of the day, don't take the results you see here at face value. How it performs in your system is what's really important. Uh, and also, as always, what we're also gonna give you in the description is a link to my blog on automation which contains the video on how to test these yourself on the MT4 strategy tester. You will also get a deeper dive into this particular indicator at the Stonehill Forex blog, where he talks about all the different ways you can tweak the settings and actually gives you the tweak settings that I don't show you on this video. And then as always as well, a place where you can go download this for yourself. So let us begin with the aforementioned Euro US dollar. Pretty good after the tweaks. Um, before the tweaks, not good at all. Uh, look, look at how the win-loss ratio alone got bigger. Uh, pretty impressive there. But ROI really is what we shoot for at the end of the day. And okay on the four-hour, but pretty decent and very passable on the daily for the Euro USD. Um, a quick talk about win-loss ratios. If you guys remember, uh, I've mentioned this a couple times before, but Rob Reinhold from Maverick Trading said, if you just flip coins and go long or short, on any random pair. If you have your money management right, you're going to do well no matter what. And I half agree with what he said. He is right. Money management and trading psychology are far more important than technical analysis is. Always have been, always will be. But I will disagree with him on the coin flipping part for one reason, because let's say you're a 50-50 trader. You win 50% of the time. If you have your money management and your trade psychology right, then over time, Every percentage point you can add on to that 50% could be thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars in your trading career long term for your bottom line. So why not use technical analysis to improve on that? Now, this is something you don't want to go overboard on when you're first testing out your systems. But this is something that as you improve over time, which we should all be doing all the time, you want to get that win-loss ratio up a little bit higher. And then in the next calendar year, shoot for a little bit higher win-loss ratio than you had before. Just make sure your ROI doesn't suffer in the process. That's the key. All right, moving on to gold where things always get interesting, and they certainly did here. Um, as we said before, the four-hour gold chart was always kind of our widow maker, but look at this. Once again, for the second week in a row, very impressive on that front. You know, some people might have thought, well, it just maybe it just didn't trend very well in the last three months. Uh, if you got the right indicator, you're going to make money. And it certainly did here and also did very well on the daily. That is impressive. Thirteen and a half percent. Got to like that. I know I know I got a lot of metals traders out there and this should make you very, very happy. On to Bitcoin. And pretty decent, very decent, actually, on the one year. I will take that all day as a starting point to where it's only going to get better after that. That is really good. And then still did okay on the four hour after the tweaks, which you will have to go to the blog to see. But before you do that, subscribe, hit the bell. We will keep these coming. Uh, but please show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing and hitting the bell. It means a lot. Numbers are down across the board, all across YouTube when it comes to trading channels, crypto channels, financial channels, it's the seasonality of things and markets are down. But this is where killers are made. So now is not the time to be taking a break. I'm not stopping, which means you're not stopping either. So go get it.